Praise the Lord. Greetings to you once again in the name of Yahshua Hamashiach and welcome you to this YouTube channel for the Wednesday Bible study. Today we'll have a new subject from the Word of God. The name of the subject is Praise Him for His Mighty Acts mentioned in Psalms 150 verse 2. Praise Him for His Mighty Acts mentioned in Psalms 150 verse 2. In that we will have uh, four subtopics. First we will see the acts of God. Second we will see the righteous acts. Third we will see the strange acts. And the fourth we will see the acts of the Holy Ghost in the Apostles. So these are the four subtopics that we will see today. And uh, as the word of God is a beautiful book and God has mentioned everything in the scriptures. So we need to study and understand all the things that God has mentioned. So before we could start, let's uh, pray that God may give us uh, wisdom to understand this beautiful word. So let's pray. Father heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Almighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the God who dwelleth between the cherubims, the God who inhabited in the praise of Israel, we give all glory and honor to thy great name. Today, Lord, in this evening time, as we break the word, Lord, give us wisdom, give us the revelation, and help us to rightly divide the word of truth. And let that mind of Christ be in us that we may speak the word, not our mind, Lord. That we may speak everything comparing scriptures with scripture, Lord. Have mercy upon us. Teach us and enlighten us, Lord. Thank you for hearing us. We ask all these things in the blessed, sweet, holy, excellent name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. So today's topic is praising for his mighty acts mentioned in Psalms 150 verse 2. Now the first subtopic is the acts of God. Now when we read the scriptures, uh, the scripture mentions about the acts uh, scripture mentions about the mighty acts, uh, the terrible acts, all these things and the great acts, all are mentioned in the Bible. We see the scriptures. Uh, Psalms 103 verse 7 says, He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. So he made his uh, way unto Moses. His acts unto the children of Israel. This is what we see in Psalms 103, verse 7. Again in Psalms 106, verse 2 says, Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth all his praises? So again, here in Psalms, it is mentioned about his mighty acts that he has done uh, in the Bible times that we see in the Old Testament, New Testament. Again in Psalms 145, verse 4, it says, One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. So from generation to generation, uh, people have been praising thy works, telling one another and uh, declaring all these mighty acts. So even today we speak the same thing. Uh, again in Psalms 145, verse 6 says, And men shall speak of the might of their terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. So his mighty acts and the terrible acts are all mentioned in the scriptures. Again in Deuteronomy, Moses, God's great servant, he writes in Deuteronomy 11.3, uh, And his miracles and his acts, which he did in the midst of Egypt unto Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and unto all his lands. So, uh, here also uh, Moses is mentioning. Uh, we saw in Psalms it is mentioned. Again in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 7, it says, But your eyes, Moses is telling the children of Israel, but your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord which he did. So the mighty acts, the terrible acts, 
the great acts that God did uh, in Egypt. Now, what was it? That was the ten plagues that you see when you read Exodus chapter seven, chapter seven to verse uh, to chapter eleven. Exodus chapter seven to chapter eleven. You see, there are ten uh, plagues that God did, and it was terrible acts, mighty acts, great acts. First one was. Uh, he turned water into blood. Second, he brought frogs. Third, he brought flies. Fourth, he brought uh, swarms of flies. Fifth, uh, cattle murray. Sixth was boil. Seventh was hay. Eighth was locust. Ninth was thick darkness. And the tenth was firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. So these are the ten plagues. Why did God do here in uh, Exodus chapter nine, verse fourteen says, "For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thy heart." He is telling Pharaoh, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. So God made uh, known to Pharaoh His great uh, power. That's why. Uh, it is written here because again in uh, Exodus chapter eight, ten also says, and he said tomorrow, and he said, be it according to thy word, that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God, Yahweh our Elohim. Uh, so there is no God like him. So he did this wonders and miracles. That was the acts, the ten. Uh, place that we have seen that was done. That's why in uh, uh, in Exodus in uh, Psalms once again, uh, 105 words, uh, 26 and 27 says, He said Moses his servant, and Aaron whom he chose, whom he had chosen, they showed his signs among them wonders in the land of Ham. So here we see the acts of God, that the mighty acts. The terrible acts, the great acts that he did. As such, you know that the whole Bible is full of God's acts and uh, things which we have never seen and heard uh, is there in the scriptures so that people may know that there is a uh, God in heaven, there is a God in earth, and there is a God who rules and reigns in the affairs of the whole universe. And his name is Yahshua HaMashiach, the true and the living God. And he came onto this earth, died for our sins as a man, and he rose again, and he is dwelling in us through the power of the Holy Ghost. His name is Yahshua the Messiah. And he is the Father, and he is the Son, and he is the Holy Ghost. He is not three persons, but he is one and only person. His name is Yahshua the Messiah. And we have seen the acts of God in the scriptures. Now we move on to the Second subtopic, the righteous acts. We move on to the second subject, the righteous acts. Now, this is mentioned in Judges chapter 5, verse 11. Uh, here in the book of Judges, we see that here it is written, They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. Even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his village in Israel, then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gate, uh, gates. Now, what was the righteous acts? Uh, in this chapter 5, when you read uh, from the beginning, you see that uh, here Israel in the fourth chapter, Judges chapter 4, words 1, 2, and 3, when we read, it says, Israel did evil, and the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, the king of Canaan, for twenty years. So Israel, when Israel committed sin, evil things, then God many a times uh, sold them. Now here, here he sold them to Jabin, the king of Canaan, for twenty years. Now, after twenty years, uh, the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And then God gave them uh, judges uh, who brought them out of all their problems. 
and uh, we see here Deborah and Barak. Now these two people, they are singing a song in the fifth chapter, verse one. We see that this is a song of Deborah and Barak when they prevailed against Jabin, the king of Canaan. So here, when uh, the children of Israel called upon the Lord and asked God for healers, then God sent judges uh, to rescue them out of the hand of all their enemies. And here we see Deborah and Barak uh, together. They are singing the song because they prevailed against Jabin, the king of Canaan. Now that was the righteous acts. That was a righteous act that God did there uh, in uh, defeating uh, Jabin, the king of Canaan, after 20 years uh, Israel being under him. So this is the righteous acts that we are seeing uh, in the scriptures. Now we move on to the uh, third subtopic, that is the strange acts. Now what is the strange acts? Again, when we read the book of Isaiah. Chapter 28, verse 21. Here it says, For the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Perazim. He shall be rock as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange works, and bring it to pass his acts, his strange acts. Now, what is this strange acts? Now, he has mentioned uh, places of two names. One is Mount Perazim. Second is the valley of Gibeon. Now, we, when we have, when we check the word, then we know what happened in these two places. Second Samuel chapter five verse twenty. And David came to Baal Perazim, and David smote them. That is the Philistines. That is the modern day Palestine people. He said David smote them, the Palest, uh, the Philistine there, and said, The Lord hath broken forth upon my enemies before me as the breach of waters. Therefore, he called the name of that place Baal Perazim. So in Baal Perazim or Perazim on that mount, uh, it said, Isaiah said, the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Perazim. Yes, he uh, rose there because here we see that through David, God defeated the Philistines in uh, Mount Perazim. And that's why Isaiah writes there, uh, that is uh, one of the strange acts that God uh, did rise uh, in Mount Perazim and defeated the Philistines there. Uh, the second thing that you see that is we have seen about uh, Gibeon, the valley of Gibeon, what happened there? Isaiah 28, 21 says, he shall be rock as in the valley of Gibeon. That he may do his work, his strange works, and bring to pass his acts, his strange acts. What he did in Gibeon. Now that is uh, when we go through again through the scriptures. Joshua chapter 10, verse 10 says, And the Lord discomfited uh, them, that is the five kings of Amorites. The Lord uh, discomfited uh, the, five comes, the five kings, that is the kings of Amorites. Uh, before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goes up to Beth Horon and smote them in uh, Akha and unto Mekhada. So here we see that uh, in the valley of Gibeon, uh, five kings of Amorites were defeated by Joshua and all the people of Israel. Now, one important thing that God did there was when we read Joshua chapter 10 12, it says, Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou born in the valley of uh, Ajalon. So here the sun stood there in the valley of Gibeon. And that was one of his uh, strange acts that he did there uh, in the valley of Gibeon when he defeated five kings of Amorites. Like uh, in Perazim, uh, David defeated the Philistines. Here Joshua defeated 
in the valley of Gibeon five kings of Amorites. And that's why that time uh, when uh, Joshua uh, asked the Lord, then the Lord uh, made the sun stand upon Gibeon. Now that is one of the strange acts that God did there. So that's why the God whom we serve, he does strange acts, he does mighty acts, he does righteous acts, he does uh, great acts, terrible acts, all these different acts we have seen in the scriptures that he has done it. So here we have seen uh, the strange acts that he made the sons to stand in the valley of Gibeon. So that is a strange act that God did it and uh, that's what we have seen in the scriptures. Now we move on to the fourth uh, subtopic that is uh, the acts of the Holy Ghost in the Apostles. Uh, we see the fifth book in the New Testament is Acts, but it should be rightly called as Acts of the Holy Ghost in the Apostles. So when we uh, read the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 36 to 46, here God has given the 14 pattern uh, of the church that has been laid down. Now that is the uh, original teachings. What we see today is uh, deviations and distortions. But the original teaching, there are 14 pattern there. Uh, when we read Acts chapter 2, 36 to uh, 46. Now here uh, Peter, the first apostle who was converted, he is the speaker there uh, and he speaks the word there. And uh, verse 36 starts with this scripture, it says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, same Yeshua, whom you have crucified both Lord and Christ, that is Adonai and the Messiah. So here the Yeshua who came in the flesh he is the God of the Old Testament and is the God of the New Testament. He is not three person, he is one person. When uh, nothing was created, he was God, God alone. And when he created something, he became a father to the creation. Then to die on the earth, he came as a son. And he rose again and he became the Holy Spirit. That dwells in a heart. But the name of God, the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost is Yahshua Hamashiach. Because Bible says, thou shalt call his name Yahshua. For he shall save his people from their sins. So this is the first uh, pattern that there is only one God. Now when all the Jewish people heard it, all those who were assembled in Jerusalem, when they heard it, their heart was pricked because the revelation came to them that the same Yahshua whom they crucified is God of the Old Testament and is the God of the New Testament. He is uh, Yahweh he is Adonai and he is the Messiah. When they heard this, their heart was pricked. And that's what they asked Peter and the rest of the apostles. Uh, Men and brethren, what shall we do? That's the time Peter said, repent. That is the second pattern. And the third is be baptized, every one of you, in the name of uh, Yahshua HaMashiach for the remission of sins. So the remission of sins is only when you are baptized in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach not in any other name, not in any other way. So therefore, uh, these are the 14, I have just shown you a few examples now up to 46 when you read, there are 14 patterns laid out uh, in the church and every subsequent church that was established after Pentecost must follow the same teachings and same doctrine. There should be no change. Because today he is again, once again, building a glorious church without spot and wrinkle. So that glorious church must follow the first church that God established on the day of Pentecost.
Then when we read further from Acts chapter 2, 36 onwards, then we come to 43 verse. There it says, many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Now that is the 11th uh, teachings or the 11th pattern uh, of the first church which God established. Because in Matthew chapter uh, 16, 18, God said, I will build my church. So it is not uh, any pastor's church, it is God's church. And he said he will build it. He said in Matthew chapter 16, 18, upon this rock, that is upon Yahshua the Messiah, I will build my church. So it is God's church, it is not anybody's church. Now that church which he established on the day of Pentecost is once again being established in these last days with the same teaching and the same doctrine because he is the same yesterday, today and forever. In between the first church and the last day's church, we see a lot of other churches that has come up with different doctrines and man-made ideas. Now they cannot be saved unless they come to the original church that God established on the day of Pentecost at Jerusalem. So here the 11th pattern was that many wonders, signs were done by the apostles. So that truth that was preached there uh, spread to Jerusalem, Judea, then it went to Samaria, then to the uttermost part of the earth. When it says the uttermost part of the earth, Paul was called to speak the word among the Gentiles. And in Acts chapter 19, 1, Paul is speaking to Ephesian people. And then later on we see a church was established. Now, uttermost part of the earth also includes this nation India to which we all belong to. Because God sent one apostle here. Uh, in fact, two he sent. One was Thomas, second was Bartholomew. Thomas came to Kerala, Bartholomew came to Kalyan uh, in Maharashtra, uh, near Bombay, uh, Mumbai. Now, Thomas came to Kerala and uh, he preached the word. Many signs, wonders, miracles were done. That's what, uh, when we check the historical facts, you will see that he did a lot of mighty works and uh, many souls were saved and uh, many uh, churches were established, especially seven churches were established uh, way back in AD 52. Thereafter, after some times, Bartholomew came, he came to this Kalyan near Mumbai and he also preached the word, uh, established churches. Uh, these are some facts that are there historically written. It is not uh, written in the scripture, but uh, historical facts will help you to understand that. So here uh, we see that these apostles, uh, they all did uh, mighty wonders and miracles. And through that, the gospel spread to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost part of the earth. It came to this land of India also. So here also the seed of truth was sown. And uh, uh, Thomas, when he preached, he never preached uh, Trinity or Triune God. He spoke the same uh, God about whom all the apostles believed. They all had one faith, one Lord and one baptism. That same teachings was also preached uh, in AD 52 when Thomas came here and later Bartholomew. But after the departure we see a lot of deviations and distortions and many churches are coming and uh, the doctrine of Trinity uh, was established and the majority of the churches today believe all those things and uh, baptize people, some in child baptism, some under flag, some under the name of Father Son Holy Ghost. Now these are all not in the scriptures. Now there were signs and wonders done in Jerusalem and Judea. Like when we read the book of Acts chapter 3, uh, it was Jerusalem and Judea when the plague man who was 40 years, he was healed. Acts chapter 3, 2 says, A certain lay from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Now this man was healed by uh, Peter through the power of the Holy Ghost. 
and he told him to walk in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Then again in Acts chapter 5, uh, verse 12 says, By the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with uh, one accord in Solomon's porch. So here uh, in Jerusalem and Judea, many signs and wonders were done. Then Samaria we see uh, Philip went there. Uh, he also preached uh, to all the people in Samaria. And the uh, Bible says, uh, verse 7, uh, verse 6 also, And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracle which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with uh, palsies, and uh, that were laying were healed. There was great joy in that city. So, Samaria also saw great signs and wonders. Jerusalem also saw great signs and wonders. Now, Paul was sent especially to the uttermost part of the earth. And uh, in Acts chapter 16, 16, here it says, And it came to pass, as he went to prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with the spirit of divination, met us which brought her masters much gain by so saying. So she was possessed. And uh, here we see that the same followed Paul and us, and Christ saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which was the way of salvation. And this, uh, this did she many days. But Paul being grieved turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of uh, Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of the, uh, out the same hour. So here a damsel was healed. It was uh, done by Paul. And then we see that uh, uh, in Acts chapter 19-11, God brought special miracles by the hand of Paul. Even handkerchiefs, when it was laid upon the people, their diseases were healed. Evil spirit came upon uh, came out of them. So the whole Bible uh, is the acts of the Holy Ghost uh, that we see in the Apostles, that we see in the Prophets. All the uh, whole Bible uh, is full of miracles and marvels. Even in the Old Testament when Moses was in the mount for 40 days and 40 nights, God spoke to Moses in the mount and God showed him his 13 attributes that is the quality in Exodus chapter 34 verse 6 and 7 now out of the 13 attributes the three attributes were iniquity transgression and sin so Moses came to know about these three attributes that is uh, iniquity transgression and sin and immediately Moses bowed on that is uh, a type of atonement uh, that is uh, afflicting himself and he bowed on to the earth and worship and he said unto God in verse 9 34 9 Exodus 34 9 says and he said if now I have found grace in thy sight O Lord let my Lord I pray thee go among us for it is a stiff naked people so the people are stiff naked and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us uh, for thy inheritance so immediately Moses, when he came to know about the three attributes out of the thirteen, he bowed on and worshipped God. That is, he humbled himself and he asked God pardon. And immediately in verse 10, Exodus 34, 10, God said, Behold, I make a covenant. Before all the people I will do marvels. Now marvels are beyond one's power to do. Uh, uh, the Hebrew word is pala. Marvel in Hebrew is Pala. Pala means wonderful acts or beyond one's power to do. So all the marvels that you see it is beyond one's power. And he said, I will do marvels such as have not been done in the earth or in any nation. And all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord. For it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. So this work, this acts that God did throughout the Bible so that people may realize there are times even when uh, Naaman was a Syrian 
God healed his leprosy. Then Ham, Naaman said, that now I know that there is a God in Israel. So all these miracles is to make people realize that there is a God who is living, he is in heaven and uh, he is still living and he is still on the throne. So we have seen the acts of the Holy Ghost in the apostles and all the uh, miracles that they did through which they brought many people to the truth and uh, many churches were established in faith. So therefore, today we have seen uh, the mighty acts that we saw all through the Bible. That's why the topic that we had, praise him for his mighty acts. So every day we need to praise him for all the mighty acts. Now the conversion of a man is also a mighty acts. Even uh, God chosen people, the Israel, who came back into the land, it is also one of the greatest miracles of the 20th century that uh, the people uh, who were scattered in AD 70 and came back in 1948 after the uh, Ottoman Empire ruling Israel for 400 years. So it is one of the greatest miracles of the 20th century that God promised Abraham, Isaac and Jacob that I will uh, give this land to you and to your children and God uh, uh, did that great miracle in bringing them back into the land which he promised to their forefathers. So in 1948 they got independence. Now till today God is the one who is taking care of them. For the past 75 years uh, God looked after them. Even in this war uh, he is still looking after them and taking care of them. And the same God is also taking care of you and me. All that we need to do is uh, believe what the scripture says not what the church says. Uh, what the first church preached, that is the same thing that we need to preach. Not adding, not diminishing, not perverting, but speaking as God has spoken so that uh, He may get all glory and honor and uh, uh, the truth may be spoken. We must not do anything for name, fame, for money, for crowd, uh, for uh, any other purposes. That should not be our motive. If that is, then uh, the church will collapse, your faith will collapse, everything uh, will go down. Therefore, we must preach what is right and just. As I said, uh, it should not be for name, for name, uh, for fame, for name, for money, uh, for uh, power, for position, for crowd. Uh, we must not do all those things or it should not be for begging. Preach the truth. God who took care of Elijah is the same God who can take care of you. All that you need to do is, uh, we need to work in the field and preach the truth uh, as it is written so that all glory may go to God. So today uh, I have preached to you the four subtopics we have seen today. The acts of God, the righteous acts, the strange acts and the acts of the Holy Ghost in the apostles and also the uh, in the prophets of the Old Testament, all the acts, the whole Bible is full of acts of God and therefore uh, we need to give all glory to Yashwa Dimasar because he is the true and the living God and we must follow all the pattern that Peter laid down on the day of Pentecost and that's what we need to believe and follow. So may uh, the Lord bless you through this word as you also study uh, the beautiful thing that God has mentioned in the scriptures. So before we put the close, let's pray for all those who may be sick, who may be in worries and tensions and anxieties or whatever be their problem, let's pray uh, the prayer of faith shall save the sick. So let's go on ahead and pray. Father in heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Almighty God, thank you for the word that you gave us. Uh, we saw all the mighty acts, the terrible acts, uh, the strange acts, the righteous acts, the acts of the Holy Ghost in the Apostles and in the Prophets and all the great mighty work that has been done, Lord, we give out glory to you. We pray for all those who heard, bless them, give them understanding, to understand the word and give out glory to you, Lord. In this time, Lord, especially, uh, pray for all those who may be sick, in worries and tensions and anxieties. For whatever be their problem, we pray, God, in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, God heal them. 
and what our sins wrong they are done, wash them, cleanse them through the precious blood of Yashwadi Masah. Make their life holy and clean, accept in thy side as a living sacrifice, Lord. Thank you for this time, Lord. And bless everybody, keep everybody strong in thy word, Lord. Thank you for hearing us. For we ask all these things in the blessed, sweet, holy, excellent name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. So we once again praise you, thank you for listening to the word. If you like it, you can share it so that uh, people who don't know Yashwa Dimasa may know him, understand the biblical truth. Thank you very much. God bless you. Praise the Lord.